Hi folks, Gwen Martin Photography here and today I'm going to be installing a GERD CTU, a CTU camera tilting unit. The reason why I'm going to be installing this onto my Fluorostar FLT91 and my ZWO ASI 2600mm mono camera is that I've got a little bit of tilt. The 2600mm does have a tilt adjustment plate in it but it's really finicky to get to and when I'm doing my astro and trying to adjust it i actually have to spin the camera off make an adjustment out where it's dusty and, and messy before putting it back on to seeing how it goes and i really didn't enjoy it uh, also with the way the camera is set up at the moment the electronic filter wheel is, is slightly spaced out from the camera this gird is going to let me actually mount the electronic filter wheel directly onto the camera itself and so that'll just reduce the spacing away from from the sensor and will hopefully make adjusting the tilt issues much easier for me so first thing we need to do is get the camera off it's going to make a little bit of noise we now have to take off the tilt plate i'm not going to remove the spacer adjuster because it's not going to be needed as we go forward Now I do know I've got a couple of little dust bunnies on my uh, on my sensor window, not the sensor itself. So I'm also going to take this opportunity just to give that sensor a very quick clean. Now thankfully, because even though it's an APS-C size sensor, I can use a swab for a full frame sensor because the viewing window is just that little bit larger than the actual sensor itself. going to put a quick little dab on there. What we're going to do is run once, left to right. And I flip it over and run once, left to right again. And so hopefully those little dust bunnies that I had will now go away. To protect the uh, sensor just for a little bit, I'm going to put that over the top. Now, next, we need to get the EFW off. I'm going to have to bring it to the back of the table here. I do not want to drop this. There we go. And it too, I'm just going to put a little cap. It's on the top there and I also need to remove this last little spacer now the last time I had to get it off it was quite jammed like it is now so I'm going to get some multi grips uh, to prise that one loose won't be long two hours later wow that uh, that took way way longer than uh, than anticipated the uh, the spacer ZWO spacer on the end of the flattener here was jammed on and uh, you can see I, I had to get some vice grips on it and in the end to get it off I actually went and bought a, a oil filter ring grip thing so anyway that's off now um, that was hard all right so it's going to move this over here so what I need to do now is mount the filter wheel directly to uh, the camera now that I've taken the back plate off. Now one of the things you might notice here is the tape covering the holes. So I can take that off now, that would have allowed light leak in. Uh, so because with the old way it didn't uh, attach directly to the camera. Oh boy, I'm really having all of 
fun today. Anyway, that's uh, all off now. So what I need to do is just remove the back plate. While I've got it apart, now's as good a time as any just to give the whole thing a bit of a clean over. So I'm just going to remove filter wheel itself. So I just want to give everything behind it a good brush out. While I've got that apart, might as well put it on. Uh, so let's now get the top back on and I tell you it takes no time at all for dust to start settling so the less time you have with everything exposed the better. So closing that up now. Okay, so the next step with the with the GERD CTU, you also have to get a little step down adapter so it reaches uh, so it can go onto the filter wheel. I can't remember what size it is right now, but I'm going to put something here that's going to say what what size uh, step down it is. So we just need to. Put this into one side of the gird. Actually, I'm going to put it onto here. Tighten that up. Now those screws are actually making this sit slightly proud um, by probably, I don't know, a millimetre. So I'm hoping it's not going to introduce any light leak. I like to think that the threads going down into it, it should be all right. And so now we'll put on the bird. All right. Just doing that up reasonably tight without going too crazy. I don't if I need to pull this apart at a later date, I don't want to repeat of trying to get the spacer off there. Now the last part, I had to get a 5mm spacer because the with the back focus of the camera normally being 55mm, with the camera's millimetres from the sensor, and I'm going to be putting stuff here, so camera millimetres from the sensor plus the thickness of the EFW, plus the step-down adapter, plus the GERD, uh, 
I needed another 5mm extension, which is going to give me an overall back focus of 55.8mm, which is okay because that will allow for the roughly 0.6mm that I need to allow for the thickness of the filters. So it's going to be 55.8. I've set my uh, field flattener to about 5.1, 5.1.5mm. It's normally meant to be 5.4, but just with the extra of what this is going to add up to, just trying to shorten it out. So I'll find out when, if it's ever a clear night again in my lifetime, as I look at the rain outside, it, I'll find out whether my back focus is good enough or not. So going to put this one, oh, and by the way, it's a, a I'm not, not gonna say it right, but Prima Lucha Lab, uh, it was, pretty expensive. There are much cheaper adapters, but at the time when I ordered this, nothing else was in stock. It was only this one. So that's just what you have to do with this hobby. And I justified it by the cost of everything else going on here. It hurt, but it was necessary. So I'll put that in there. And now it's going to hang the scope off the back. Number four. Do that so you can see now how all of that's hanging together, how now the camera is flat on the electronic filter wheel, the EFW. Now I'm going to have to do this gently. One last clear out of there. And we're done. Uh. So I'm looking, I'm looking at this more, and I actually don't like how that the the bolt in the back of the filter wheel are making it sit proud of that spacer. So I'm actually going to take it apart and see what I can do there. So in actual fact, and I should have checked this um, before, but the all the bolts will be under the CTU, so that should actually stop any light leak. So let's try and take this apart without. <coughs> making a meal of it. So I've realized that even with the screws out, because there is a one mil thickness of the adapter, there is a chance for light leak. So now I'm going to be taping up the holes. It's taking longer than I hoped, but we'll just get it done and then it'll be done. All right, so all I've done is just use some adhesive labels. I doubled up on it, should be thick enough not to let any light in. They're all down. All right, last time. All right. Finished again. So that's the part one, just getting the adjuster uh, put on there. The quick explanation of how it will work is you've got three points around it. One, two, and three back here. And those are the screws to adjust uh, in or out. The ones on the front you actually don't touch at all unless you have a camera weighing over four kilos according to the instructions. So these have actually come loose out of the box on mine. And yeah, so I'll be marking these as one, two, three, and in part two is when I'll hopefully get rid of the niggling little tilt issues that I've been having. So there you go, that's the GERD CTU camera tilting unit. I'm Glenn Martin. If you found any of that useful or even maybe humorous as I fumbled my way around, a little like goes a long way and maybe even a subscribe if you wanna see more of my astrophotography journey as well as my photography in general. 
Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Have a great day.